Now, everyone knows over the past sort of like few years, my big pet project it hasn't been my own career. It's been get Carl famous. Yeah. I want people to recognize him in the street, come up to him and say, you bald headed mank twat. I well, want let me tell you now, Rick, I've been out and about and a lot of people have come up to me and said, it has Carl Pilkington got a head like a fucking orange. Well, I've, and I've been... had to instantly confirm the answer to be yes. But he's had a call. He had a call recently from a film company asking him if he's got any ideas for movies. Now, how desperate, in what dire straits must the British film industry be that they're going, we need Carl Pilkington. We have hit rock bottom. And he went along for an interview. So what, and you went in and you... I went, I went along and um, had a meeting. And uh, they just said, right, you know, got any ideas? And uh, sort of said, you know, what, what are you thinking? What sort of thing are you after? Are you after action, <laughs> thriller, whatever? Uh, you can provide any of it. I love that that he's playing it cool, like <laughs> you've come to the right person. <laughs> yeah, 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 My yeah. time's precious, what do you need? Yeah. Yeah, I'm Carl Pilkett, the movie doctor, what do you need, Papa? <laughs> so, thought of this idea sort of on the spot. Good. That always buy him. Um, no, but sometimes that's how good ideas come up, don't yeah. they? Just, just so a lot of yours have come up, yeah. No, but when if you just Randomly. talk, I find that your mouth comes out with stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Right, there's another right, quote. Right. There is another quote. That, <laughs> if you talk, that, your mouth comes out with that, that. That that to me is stands along with what were those things in Gremlins called? No, but what uh, I mean, you, if you sit there and try and use your brain to do it, right, it doesn't work the same. Just just keep talking. Just keep your, keep your mouth talking, and eventually it will come out with something pretty good. That is exactly what Plato said. Well, uh, so to anyway. Aristotle, he said, "Sit down. I've got an idea for you." Uh, Aristotle said, "Plato, I'd what you go right." Just keep talking and eventually your brain will come out with stuff. So what I thought, I just started off by saying like actors' names and that who I thought should be in it, because then that's giving more, it's building. Right, okay, so who's saying? Who's saying? Who's saying? So I said, right, I'm seeing uh, Clive Warren. <laughs> who the fuck's Clive Warren? Who's Clive Warren? The one who was in Closer. Clive Owen. Clive Owen. Right, all right. Do they look at you like you're a fucking funny. idiot? <laughs> so they all started trying to figure out, who's this Clive Warren we've not heard about? We, uh, he, he must said, be amazing. Yeah, he's man, on Clive Warren, get me Clive Warren <laughs> on the phone. Who's get Clive me Warren. Clive Warren. And I said, uh, Rebecca de Mornay, right? <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, where did that come from? She hasn't been in a film uh, for 15 years, has she? Clive Warren and Rebecca de Mornay. <laughs> they thought he was a genius. They've never thought of putting Clive Warren with Rebecca de Mornay. <laughs> but hang on a minute, you could have, you could have <laughs> any <laughs> film star. This is your fantasy <laughs> casting, <laughs> yeah. and you choose a bloke that doesn't exist, and a woman who hasn't been on TV or in a film for 10 years. <laughs> Oh God! Why didn't oh. you choose, you know, uh, someone who existed Gino or someone who's a oh. big star? Oh God! Clive <laughs> Warren! Oh God! Oh so God. anyway, starts off, and the people, you know, you, you're seeing into their lives from yeah. like the morning. Yeah. So it's like a nice sunny day. Yeah. Radio's on. You know, they're going about the day. They're having the breakfast. They're saying, "Oh, what we're we doing tonight?" And you're thinking, "Oh, they've got a nice life." Mm. She, she's like, "Love you and all that." Yeah. He walks out the house, gets hit by a bus. Oh, so Clive Warren's they're dead. I don't know if Clive Warren would take that part because he, he ain't got much to do. Has no, he? I don't. If I if I if I know Clive Warren, and I think you do. I think I do. Carry on. So he, he's hit by a bus. So he's so dead. he's hit by a bus and that. The titles come up. Oh, he's got yes. you right. She's Starring devastated. She's, Clive she's Warren. fed up. She's devastated and that. Um, doctor says Clive's dead. Who's playing the doctor? Jack Nicholson house. Um, sort of, uh, what's that fella who was in Independence Day? Um, Will Smith. No, the, the, the old, the old black fella. Uh, Morgan Freeman. Yeah. Yeah. Get him in. He's Morgan Freeman, yeah. <laughs> yeah. He says, your husband's dead. She's like, oh, God. What happens then is, he says, but listen, what we can do now, we can take the brain out. Right. Right. And, and, and a fact that I'd read that day before the meeting, this isn't in the film now, this is me. Right, but right. lucky, yeah, okay. luckily. I read, read a fact. thing about how the brain can, it can run on half of it. You've actually got a full brain Some running of us on half. So this is, this was in my mind still. Well, half your mind, yeah. So I said, what happens is Morgan Freeman says, been working on this. You can run, you can run your life on half a brain. Right. She's sort of a bit like, what are you telling me this for now? My, my husband's just died like 20 minutes ago. Yeah. And he goes, yeah, but if we're going to do this, we've got to act quick. She's like, do what? He says, whilst his brain's not fully dead, 
because it, it stays awake for a bit when you oh, think it's, it's not dead then, fine. No, no, but yeah, he is, but they found out that right. it stays awake a little bit. No, 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 no. no, so, no, no. he's gone. No, no. hit by a bus. Yeah, no, he's dead. dead. If the brain's dead, you are dead. Clive Warren's dead. And if, if, uh, if the brain's not dead, you're not dead. No, but it's like people in a coma. They're dead, aren't they? But no, the no, dead. no, no, they're in a coma. No, they're, they're in a coma. No, they come out of coma, he's dead. All right, then he's in a coma. He's been hit by the bus, but the chances are he's not going to come out of that coma, but his brain is still awake. So, change that. That's easily done. Uh, hold on though, I, I like this fact that he's in a coma, so they're going, look, he's definitely going to die in this coma, take the brain out now, pop the brain out. But why is that such a weird thing when that's what they do now? That's what they do now. What is? That's what they do. What? They do that. What? 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 what, what, what a brain transplant. No, but when, like, how, how I've signed that donor card, yeah. like, if anything happens to me... No, 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 there's the no lot. such thing as a brain donor. Oh, we've explained to you before. Yeah, but they're working on it. They've said something about Einstein. They, they, they messed about with his brain for ages, trying to work out if it was full of stuff. That's what they're doing. They're working on that. There's loads of things that doctors are doing that we don't know about. I've seen some weird stuff on the internet. <laughs> yeah, I know you have. Yeah. I saw a programme on Channel 5 where a monkey brain was still alive and it was stuck on a stick. <laughs> And they, they you were watching it. the magic roundabout. They poked it and it reacted. <laughs> right. So it's still alive. It's being kept alive. And it's only a matter of time. What's what's the brain linked up to? The as long as you cord. can link it up to the eyes and somehow so it can tell the arms and legs what to do, you're laughing. I love that. As, imagine a, a team full of doctors going, well, we're going to try and do a brain. Like, Carl, um, as long as you can link this up to the eyes and tell the arms and legs what to do, we're laughing. <laughs> Cheers, Carl. See you later. <laughs> then what happens is they say do you want half of his brain in your head half she's, of his brain she in said head. she says definitely not i'm having you struck off she starts screaming she calls the police he gets arrested yeah, but you'd have said that years ago when people can have like someone else's arm put on their body and stuff <laughs> yeah but he's only in a coma yeah no but he's not going to come out of that co coma right. so so it's like this or nothing it's right. like look you know what what we're going to do here we can either turn the switch off yeah. or we can put his head in your head but why would but you so, why so what he does so what they do then they're going to take half his brain half of his brain take out half of hers pop it in place why would she do that because she loves him but hold on well no, no wait 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 what would she then be because this is what i'm trying to tell okay, you okay okay sorry what happens is he, he explains all this so i mean this would probably cover about 20 minutes in the film but i'm just rushing I, it, I just rushing switched it off now. but yeah no you wasn't this this bit would have you mm. so what well i'd have actually left when i i wouldn't even gone in to see a film starring uh, clive warren and rebecca de mornay <laughs> unless, <laughs> unless it was 1985. <laughs> so, so the thing is she's the same as you she says the same thing she goes why would i do that doctor mm. and uh, he goes well what will happen is he's gone but you'll you'll have his thoughts so in the morning when you say oh, i don't know what to have well they have cornflakes his bit of the brain will sort of say have a wheat -a -bix. Have shredded wheat yeah. and she's like oh yeah good idea sorry sorry so the point of this film is that the dead man can remind her what <laughs> breakfast cereal she likes yeah so the thought... When what do you mean, she... yes? So that's it, is it? No, 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 that's not the only wait, thing. Oh, wait a minute, this is only Act 1. That's, that's just the first bit. Everything's going well. She so has it done. So what is... What, who is she? Is she herself? She's Rebecca Nimone. Yeah. But, but now with and again, with, with, with him chipping in with a bit of voiceover. So the idea is it's all going well at the beginning. And she's... So she can't decide what so, to so wear. She's got, he, so she's had is. half of her brain taken out and put in a bin, yeah. OK? And and Clive Warren's uh, half has been put in there. So now she's walking round... Okay. So yeah. she's like a schizophrenic. No, like I say, the brain is alive, so it's all going well when she leaves hospital. Yeah. And she gets a first taste of it, and it's a bit weird to get hold of, because she's, she's sort of, uh, I think when she signs herself out, he's sort of fighting, writing his name and stuff, so there's a few sort of technical things that, yeah. that she has to get used to. And does Clive's brain what does know he that think? he's now inside her brain? Um. Does that matter? Well, I would say it matters, because... Yes. Otherwise, yes, it, it does matter, Carl. What's 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 he thinking? Can, I mean, what's what the I mean point is, of this? Why has she gone along with this? Because she really loves him. But what? But what's in it for him? What does she think? Well, say if I died, yeah. and Suzanne said, "Go on, I'll have half of Carl's," right? She would wake up in the morning to a thought of me, sort of going, "Oh, you never guess what I just thought about or whatever." I'd still be there. The rest of your body is sort of waste, isn't it? But like the rest it. of your body's sort of waste. No, it is, kind of. If When when someone dies, it's yeah. not that person anymore, is it? You can't have a chat with them. So if you could have someone's brain in your head when they're dead, you'd have it, wouldn't you? 
What are you talking about? Why would I have someone's brain in my head when they're dead? Well, what I've got a perfectly good brain. So you're telling me you wouldn't have it done then? <laughs> uh, uh, of course I fucking wouldn't. I, I would can I? also categorically state I wouldn't know. Yeah, but you're saying that now, but once you're in that position that someone who, you know, you're loving that dies, if the doctor said, do you want it? No! And I'd go, no! It's madness! I don't think you It's wait. madness! All right, all right, all right. Let's so, tell me a typical bit of dialogue. Um, well, we've done the breakfast scene. <laughs> yeah, that, that okay, was dynamite. Yeah. Yeah. That's fucking Oscar winning. Yeah. Can we do lunch? Um, they may be like at the funeral because even though the brain's still alive, they still have the funeral, and you can have like a funny bit where they stood around the grave, and like there's some relation there who he doesn't like, and she can start laughing, and the family are looking at her going, "Why is she laughing?" Yeah. And she's sort of laughing, and he's saying something a bit rude, going, "Look at her head." Do you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. Like Stuff on the family. Yeah. <laughs> a little cameo for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And uh, mm. so you have all that, and people are sort of liking the film, thinking, "Oh, it's quite funny." This. Mm. Yeah. And then yeah. you hit them hard. <laughs> It's the, honestly, it really is the ramblings of a I mental have to case. Say, though, right. I, I have to say, though, I am hooked now. I want to know what's going to happen next in the story. Then what happens is <laughs> she hears the voice go, Leslie, where are you? Something. Right. Her name's not Leslie. No. No. So she's thinking, who's Leslie? Yeah. So in her mind, she's going, who's Leslie? <laughs> He's going, oh. So he's, he's thought, hang on, I've let something slip. I've here. let something slip. So she's going, answer me. Oh. He goes quiet on her. Oh. Right. So. He's, he was having an affair. This is this is the thing. So she's trying to hunt down. Leslie. Leslie. And he's got to stop her thinking it. Then what happens is, I mean, you know. Where are your backs? So he's got to hunt down Leslie. So he's got, she's got to hunt down mm. Leslie. It's a woman, is it? Another Leslie or it's is it It's another a woman. Right. But what happens is, I mean, without ruining the end for everyone. What would happen sort is. of happen is? Oh yeah, because we don't want to ruin it. Because this will yeah. be this will be filling the multiplexes in no yeah. time. No, it's, it's the greatest love story ever told, set in a head. But listen, let's I just get to hang the on end. a sec though, Carl. I don't. Yeah, you've got to tell us the end. I don't think you can let people no, come listening. On. Come on, what's the on end? Waiting for the film. Just let your mouth talk. Right. So what I said was maybe what happens is his brain mm. is more powerful than hers. Right. How it's now? What? How is there power? I don't, why is there no power involved? What I mean is, her brain was running the rest of her body. Mm. Now he's His taking brain, over. That gets more powerful mm. and overrules her body. Okay. Yeah. She then fancies Leslie. So, so it's a lesbian hold on, film. this is building up to a lesbian <laughs> love. So what the? Well, it's what? trendy, isn't it? That. So just have a bit of that at the end. And so hold on. So he overpowers her. So she is now. A lesbian. What's Leslie getting out of this? Why does Leslie think, hold on, why is my because dead lover's wife coming on to me? Because this is what I'm saying to you. It's re relationships. It's a love of two brains. Right, okay. Again, can that's anyone the out there, can line. we make that into it? That's a quote. The relationships is a love of two brains. <laughs> well, it's now, he's got something there. He's got something yeah. there. But my point is this. Why is Leslie suddenly turned lesbian? Because she loves the brain. But does she know this is Clive Warren? Rebecca will say something now and again, like, oh, I like me... Minge. <laughs> I like me food done like this or whatever, and it's all about... Cooked. Eve likes I love my food cooked. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my, wait a minute, Clive Warren on this group. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm in two minds about this bacon. Yeah. What, what I'm going to turn into a lesbian. People, Shredded wheat. People like what they like. And it's oh. the same way, like I've said to you before, with someone who's been going out with a woman and then is found out that she's got a twin sister and they divorce that first twin and go out with the other twin it's all the same you're after the same thing aren't you yes but that when a cat dies you buy another one <laughs> it's the same thing you want that same yeah but you don't necessarily something. switch your sexual orientation in the case of your twin scenario they both look the same yeah is there, is there, has there ever been one where um it's a uh, twin boy and girl go well i was going out with her but i mean he looks a bit like her yeah. i loved boobs now i like cock this is your problem you don't know anything and this theory about if your mouth talks enough the brain will kick in soon it hasn't <laughs> I've only been camping a few times, and each time I was glad when it was over. The last time was last year in Lyme Regis. Yeah. When did you go camping in Lyme Regis? Last year. It's all right, Lyme Regis. But it was all a bit of a nightmare, because I was going with my mate, and uh, he said he knew someone who knew, knew someone who had a bit of land in the garden. Mm. Um, we had a bit of land in the garden. What's the point, though, innit? You know, what's the point of camping in someone's garden where there's a sort of, like, a spa down the road and, like, a pub? No, because you're by the sea, aren't you? 
It's getting away from it all, seeing the world. It's not if you're in someone's front garden. No, back. Oh, sorry. <laughs> well, so, there's even less to see except three fences. No, but it's private, isn't it? So the thing is, he, he said, oh, it's a great garden, uh, the, the owners are away, mm. and there's a toilet, an outside toilet that they have getting for, like, when they have parties it, yeah. and stuff. Mm. So we get there, and this lad who knew about this bit of land... Someone's back garden. Well, yeah. Uh, said, oh, you can't use it, they haven't gone on holiday. <laughs> so now you're stuck in the middle of a big civilised conurbation called Lyme Regis. What, how are you going to survive? <laughs> well, we ended up just sort of keeping on the beach. But, uh, Did you pitch your tent on the beach? Put the tent on the beach. We found somewhere where there was a load of rubbish. So we oh, thought, nice. that's the place to go. Oh, yeah. Yeah. No, no, municipal that... tip. What was it? Was it was it chemical waste or just like you know, no, just, um, just and syringes and oh, uh, but, but listen, though, you've got to think true. about that. Rusty, if, what's the matter, Rusty? If there's rubbish there, it means it was a good place to camp. Why? Why? Because other people have camped there. Right. So that's how you've got to look at it. It's like it's a way. That's like a little tip of. So you um, could have slept in a public lavatory. Yeah, yeah. This one's nice. What is covered in shit? It means other people have had a shit here. <laughs> Welcome to our five-star hotel. You'll notice vomit over all the fucking walls. So that means people have had a good time here. They got right pissed up and threw their lungs up. <laughs> so that's that's where we put down the tent. We uh, put down the tent there. And then so what was annoying the is... He puts down the tent. <laughs> we, uh, we, what's the name? We, uh, it was already up. It, it carried was already it all, the all the way there. They weren't going to pack it down. Yeah. Uh, the weird thing was... As soon as we set up, some other people turned up. Oh, that's all the rubbish tip. <laughs> <laughs> Holiday makers, they uh, uh, they started setting up their tents. Yeah. Like, oh. No, near. Look, there's some nappies over there. Yeah. Near, near the nappies. And um, they offered us some sausages. All right. My mates said, "Oh, ignore them. That's like code for uh, swingers." What? No! What? So there were some people cooking some sausages. Yeah. Saying, "Would you like the sausages? We've made too much." And you it's said, just no, that's thing. Don't for talk swinging. to strangers. It's like we want to get away from it all. Yeah. We don't want someone, you know, it starts off with sausages, doesn't it? And then so, so you know but, it. but what do these people look like? Uh, they were about 45. Who were they, that? A man and a woman. A man and a woman. So what was in it for the bloke? Uh, some people like that, don't they? No, I mean, you, you say, right, I want the bald one look. <laughs> uh, if it's like wife swapping, should, <laughs> well, should one of you be a wife? No, but I don't. I don't know all the rules and that. But uh, he's just got a real thing for fucking oranges. And we didn't want any sausages anyway, so we just sort of. I said, don't believe sausages is a code, a code for swingers because <laughs> eventually, how many times do they give someone sausages and they go, "We'll get your pants off," and they go, "Wait a minute, we just have some sausages." They go, oh, "This isn't working. This code." But why we need would a better be, code? Why would we be being offered sausages? Because they're nice people and they're making sausages. Yeah. Makes you wonder. We don't. Let's not trust these people. Let's move our tent nearer to the corpse. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, so yeah, that was the camping. Oh. September 30th. Going away with Suzanne's mum and dad. We're meeting them at Madeira Airport as they're flying in from Manchester. The plane was full and I had a headache. There was a baby sat behind us that was crying its eyes out for the whole flight. Oh. The mother of it said it was upset because its ears were hurting. So were mine. <laughs> We went to try and find a supermarket. Suzanne's man was having a go at her dad because he didn't have a shirt on. She said he looks a mess and is embarrassed to be seen with him. It's their ruby anniversary tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> That's why we went away. Oh, yeah. Now, Carl, I know you're fascinated by the concept of the doppelganger, of seeing someone who looks exactly like you. Yeah. Jake has emailed in. He says, Carl, if you could spend a day with an exact replica of you, Okay, so if somehow they've cloned you, Carl, and they've got you've got him for one day. What would you do with this? What would you What would you make him do? What would you uh, What conversation would you have with him? What would you do? Is there anything you could, you know, how would you utilize him for one day? Well, they'd both say I'm not bothered, and that'd be the end of conversation. <laughs> yeah. What would do me head in is, does he does he think the same way? Look the same way? Exactly dresses? the same. Yeah. How would I know which one I was? <laughs> because you'd be you. That's amazing. No, no, no. How would I know which That's one I was? That's incredible. No, because that is the most stupid thing ever said by a human being. Can we get the Guinness Book of Records on this? It has anyone anywhere in the world said anything more stupid than how would I know which one was me? But think about it. This other person's going, all right, thanks for uh, meeting up and that. And I go, hang on a minute. No, you, you came to me. 
and then Suzanne would come home and she wouldn't know the difference and then suddenly you start doubting yourself and you go should I be leaving or so how do I know if I am that real one if he knows what I know but you know who you are because yeah, you're but, experiencing it but he'd it. be saying that because he'd say yeah it's a bit weird but isn't you it? know the it, truth you, know? you idiot because how you would I know which one I was so anyway but bear in mind, you what could would pass, you do? You could pass him off as yourself. What would you do? Would you play Trick Street? Would you, uh, you know, you could what? be in two places at once. Would you do stings? Would you do scams? No, because it would only end up getting me into trouble, won't it? Because people won't believe that there's another one like me. Mm. Otherwise, everyone would be saying that when they get caught robbing. They go, oh, "It wasn't me. It was my doppelganger." <laughs> it can only. I wouldn't want it to be honest. It's a. It, again, it's a bit of a headache, isn't it? Because he could be going off, going mental, causing all sorts of trouble, and you're going, well, you pack it in. <laughs> and he's going, what? What are you on about? But then that wouldn't happen, would it? Because he's being me, so he'd be sat wherever I am anyway. Because mm. he'd want to do what I want to do. So, pointless. But I still wouldn't want it. <laughs> it's unbelievable. That was a conversation with himself. That yeah. was amazing. That was, like, that was like experiencing what it would be like there was two cars. <laughs> yeah. He was we, could, discussion with himself. we could have left in yeah. that time and come back. And he'd be arguing still. What does this mean? Does this mean? <laughs> does this mean though that I could just sit at home and not do anything, and just send me out on? Yes. And any any when he when he's seen something happen, I'm seeing it. No, 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 no. no, no. You're separate people. You're separate people. But then yeah. he's not a doppelganger. Then, well, is he? you're identical twins. Then you found out identical twins, and he's got the, exactly the same input as you. I mean, it's not a real question, is it? It's just a little again. But I said to you the other week about twins and that. How it's, I, I wouldn't like to have a twin. It's, a, it's all right when you're a kid, but unless you're a Siamese twin, even they don't even look alike. Do they just stuck together? You don't go. Oh, don't they look like each other? They have different haircuts. They don't. They don't carry that thing on, do they? That normal twins do. Like normal <laughs> twins, the mums say have the same haircut, wear the same shirt. Siamese twins never look the same. They just got their ass stuck together. <laughs> Again, it's a dialogue in his own head. It's unbelievable. Okay, Carl. This is a a, a logical conundrum. Um, to a certain extent, there's a little bit of lateral thinking because, uh, but there is only one right answer. Um, now, the pressure here isn't to get this right. The pressure is when I've told you the answer to then understand it. Because I've still, when I've explained this to people, I've laid out for them, they still can't quite get the concept. Um, okay, so there's two doors, Carl. Yep. One leads to heaven, one leads to hell. Okay, they're identical. You can't tell them apart. Okay, 50 50. Right. Obviously, you want to go to heaven, I assume. Right, okay. there's two guards, identical guards, guarding each door. Okay? Right. The one guarding hell always tells a lie. The one guarding heaven always tells the truth. You have to ask one question to find out which, which is which, and then go through the door you want. What question do you ask? I've only got one. Yeah. And what, one to, to both? No, one to either of them. You don't know which one's which, though. So what question do you ask? Why can't I ask, like, both of them one? Because it's because not the, the rules. Because the rules are you can only ask one. There aren't actually two doors labelled heaven and hell, Carl. That's this a leap of imagination here. And I, I've, I've, I've definitely got to, answer, I've got to ask them a question. I can't just sort of have a feel of the door <laughs> to see if there's any heat or anything. <laughs> They're identical. You stand a few yards away. You cannot tell from the outside of these doors which is which. What question do you ask? Can't look through the keyhole or anything. There's no keyhole. Anywhere hole. near them. Um, Let's imagine there's a small rope that prevents you from getting anywhere near, rather like outside a nightclub. Yeah. So, they stood there. Yeah. They both look the same. They're both smiling. Yeah. But one of them's not really smiling really he's trying to make me make a mistake isn't he well he's just gonna lie when you ask him a question if you ask him so what's the point in asking a question do i know one of them's gonna lie yeah but would they be neighbors like this would they be that close <laughs> why <have> <laughs> <sighs> I mean, we're not sure if these two guys get on. Well, I'll tell you the answer. No, 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 I want to see if he can get it. He's almost there. Uh, no, he's not almost there. What am I thinking? So no, hang on. Right, so you go up and yeah. you go, um, you Right, go hang on. Well, look, let's, let's imagine that, let's imagine Ricky and I are those two guys, okay? Right? 
But we have to. Um, uh, uh, well, well, me and me and Steve would decide which doors we're guarding. Okay. Hi. Uh, I'm. Uh, look, look away, Tom. Okay. Right, then. So we've decided. Okay, one of us is guarding hell, and one of us is guarding heaven. Which question are you going to ask, and who are you going to ask it to? Right. Um, I'll just say to you, Steve. I'll go. Uh, uh, got some. Uh, got some <laughs> posts for God here. <laughs> that's not a question. That's a statement. Right. You've got some posts for God here. Well, that's not a question. Yeah, but maybe All the question's right. coming. I got. You got some posts for God here. Yeah. Uh, and it needs to be signed. It's, it's not a, a question. Still not a question. No, let so him finish. Is, is God in? Because I need him to sign for this post. Is he in? Well, I can answer that as well if you want. Go on. He, he's, yeah, he's in. He's behind my door. Do you want to answer it? Well, yes. Do you, want, do you want to get him? Just. Uh, well, no, you've only got one question. So you are, you're asking Steve, is God in? What's the answer? Yes. Ask me. Yes. Look, lads, I'm just trying to do a job here. <laughs> um, <laughs> what am I going to do with this? <laughs> well, give it to me and I'll give it to God because he's behind my door. Steve? Yeah, cut, give it to me and I'll take it into God because he's behind my door. You're an idiot. Uh, let me tell you the answer. I'm guarding hell, by the way. I'm the devil. Steve's God, okay? So you ask me what, what Steve would say if you asked him what door he was guarding, and I'm going to lie. I know he'd say heaven because he'd tell the truth, but I'm lying, so I'd say he'd say hell. So the, the, uh, the question is... If I was to ask the other one what door he was guarding, what would he say? And whatever the person answers is the door they're guarding. Steve, what door are you are you looking after? Well, heaven. Yeah. Why should I believe you? Because you don't know. No, that doesn't work. Because you asked me the same and I'd say heaven as well. Right, so who do I believe? This is where you use your gut feeling though, isn't it? This is what life's... <laughs> As opposed to the pure logic that Ricky's just used. I just think, because there's a lot of <laughs> questions in life where you don't know the answer and you go, do you know what, I don't like the look of him. <laughs> so... They're I, identical. Yeah, but they're still identical twins. You always get a little snidey one. <laughs> <laughs> I spoke to Ricky and his friend Glyn about art. I just don't get it. Ricky had some odd pictures on his walls. I don't have any pictures up in my flat because of the mirrored wall. <laughs> but I can't say I'm bothered. The mirrored wall, we should just explain what that is. When you moved into your flat, there was an enormous mirror on one wall. Was that right? We just got this flat and, uh, you know, it's not a big flat. So I think the people who had it before, he was a gay fella, right? Which was a bit like, oh, so you've been doing with that mirror and that. But <laughs> that, that was... <laughs> what? No, just, you yeah. know. Just what? What? Well, what has he been doing with the mirror? Well, what's what's doing doing the, why, 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 no, what? it's just because they're quite sort of experimental in it, aren't they? And I don't know. What do you mean? What do they do? Well, I wouldn't know anything about it, but go on. No, what do you want? What? No, I don't. Experimental what do in what way? What do you mean experimental? I just mean, you know, they'd be doing stuff. What? Of what? Whatever they do. Chemistry. What? They have a chemistry set out. They'd be doing experiments. What? No, just doing what? Singing I Am What I Am and just checking out their no, the dance moves. I'm not having a go at anyone, but what? I'm just saying, like, they're doing what they're doing. Uh, which Carl, you're not the as well. No, I'm not. I'm not. This is what, why... Well, what, why are you worried about what a little gay fella was doing in your flat before you got it in the front of a mirror? I wasn't worried about it. Why I mean, are you thinking about what he's doing? Why are you fantasising what a little gay fella was doing in front of your mirror in your... I'm, I'm, I'm not bothered. I'm just telling you what, why it was a bit odd that he had a mirror in there, right? But forget the, the history. But you've got a mirror in there now, haven't you? No, because what I did was... I tried, I was going to take it down, and I thought, oh, it's a bit dangerous. This, mm. You know, it could crack and... Because it's the size of the whole wall, isn't it? It, it, it took up a whole wall. Right. right, so like when he's moving about everywhere, he's got a good view of it and that. But he's got this full wall of mirror, and I thought I can't set that down. <laughs> and uh, I thought, what what can I do? So I've just put wallpaper on it. Brilliant. And it looks all right. You you wouldn't know and what have you, but it means that I can't put any pictures up. That's that's all. That's all I'm saying. Because I've put a nail in. And it. what don't you understand about art? What about art? Don't you understand the concept, specifics? No, so I, I, that's that's like when we when we were in London having a shop around at Christmas and there was that picture of fruit for seven hundred quid. It's like, <laughs> well, just get some fruit. You know what I mean? You can get some real fruit for three quid. Yeah. I understand that, but don't invent cameras then. One or the other. Do you know what I mean? That's <laughs> what annoys me. Someone invents something, and then they go, "We've got to invent something else." Like the abstract thing. Why has someone gone? Oh, I can't have paintings anymore because. Was it a Dali, going melting know. clocks and stuff? 
Right. I mean, the first one was all right when he did the first clock, but then all the time he's just like, oh, I'll draw something and it's got a melting clock on it. Mm. I'll do a sheep, put, put one of them on it. Put, Have you seen his lobster telephone? That annoys me. Why? Because he, I think what annoyed me more with that is when he heard about how it happened, um, he had some artist mate round, yeah. right? And um, I don't know what happened. Uh, they, oh, were okay. they were eating. That's a hell of an anecdote. No, no, but they were eating. They were eating some yeah. food and what have you. Yeah. Lobsters? And, uh, yeah, they, they were eating lobster. Oh, right. And uh, That's handy. I don't know, the other artist, whoever it was, sort Telephone. of started saying, oh, you and your clocks and all that, right? Brilliant. And, um, this started, didn't happen. They yeah. started arguing. Yeah. And he chucked some of the lobster. Bollocks. And it landed it on the phone. bounced off his mate's head, went on the phone, and they both looked at each other like, are you thinking what I'm thinking? And they, they, they brought out that phone as a bit of art. Things like that annoy me. Didn't because happen. it was them just messing about. That didn't happen. Just telling you what I know. I saw his, his work. Each to their own, if that's what he's doing. I'm just saying, I'm not putting my stamp of approval on it. Art should be there to tell a story, not just to have a splash of colour. We well, know. Suzanne w likes some art. Just like uh, it's a, Suzanne's not allowed to watch telly unless it's a favourite thing. Otherwise, she's got to talk to me <laughs> about stuff. There's no art. There's no point. Just wallpaper. I'm just saying we've got three three windows we can look out of. Right. Right. Stop looking at the walls. Look out the window. <laughs> My man phoned and said that my Auntie Nora, ah, uh, the classic Auntie Nora, wanted me to look on the internet to find out what the weather will be like in Spain at the end of November. I don't know where she gets her money from. Two months ago, she was asking me, Dad, how much it would be to get her back garden astroturfed because <laughs> she's sick and tired of the grass getting out of What does she want to do? Start a football team? <laughs> what does she want a back garden astroturf? She likes the sort of green look, but she doesn't like the headache that comes with it, so she's just looking into getting that false grass put in there. Brilliant. Don't know how much it is. But. Went round to Ricky's and had some chicken curry that Ricky's girlfriend Jane had made. Ricky and Jane were going on holiday for a few days and had arranged for Glyn to come in and make sure the cat was okay while they were away. I'm sick of that cat. I was surprised that they hadn't paid for the little shit to go away with them on first class. <laughs> Blimey, getting a bit vitriolic in the uh, why diary. Doesn't he, uh, why doesn't he like the fact that I've got a cat and I, I love the cat? Why? why it's why just everything in that house that you've got gets sort of special treatment and it's a cat. And it what do you mean you get me? special treatment? You, sometimes we put I, food down for it, and yeah. sometimes it gets uh, uh, on our lap and we stroke it. You don't what, just stroke it. We're you not massage it. it. You massage its back. You go, no, you need stressed out. Well, no, no, it's out. Good, it, no, no, I'm not saying you stressed out. At no point did I say you stressed out. You <laughs> said, what the fuck are you doing for? Is it stressed out or something? I, 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 I like uh, touching my cat. To be honest with you, I don't like Ricky's cat. Oh, it, I can't believe because it! Because every time I go around there, it goes straight from the goonies. <laughs> yeah, it's it's like the lizard thing you've got. It's kind of, it just sat there, you bought it a big box, right, to be in. Right, one, one it's one. a salamander, right. so it's an amphibian. Yeah. It's not a box, it's a big vivarium. Yeah, but what I'm saying and is... As it for, uh, and, and, and if you're going to criticise someone for just sitting there, uh, having a round head and doing nothing with its life, uh, people who live in glass houses, no, we've done this do one. You know, do you know what gets me, though, right, Steve? When I was there, I was looking at it, and I thought, is it dead? Right, so he's just sat there. Like, and the, it was thinking exactly <laughs> the same <laughs> fucking thing. sat there, not moving, right? And then on the top of the box is like a box full of crickets and stuff. <laughs> That's... it. It's, it's, it's food, yeah. right? But they were more active than the thing that it was going to feed. <laughs> Get rid of the lizards, <laughs> keep them in there. More entertaining. <laughs> Don't understand it. A few months back, a girl who was having a kid showed me one of them scans of the kid that was in her. That's science gone mad, isn't it? I couldn't think of anything nice to say as it looked like a frog. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know why we've got to that point? <laughs> what? Why, why have we got to see something that, that young? Why? Because people can keep an eye on the progress of the baby in the womb. Yeah, but why are they printing it out and stuff? That's some, surely that's for a doctor to see. Well, that's just an added bonus for people who are interested in but such things. That's like saying, why do you take pictures of anything? No, no but what, what <laughs> I mean is, why? at what point are we going to stop? Are we going to start sort of x-raying the fella's testicles and saying, well, there it is at a really young age? <laughs> Well, where, where, where are we going to stop? It's, big, it's just horses for courses, isn't it? Some people like to have a record of their baby in the womb. They That's like right. to show their baby. They're excited they about it. They All sit right, down yeah. and they, they show the friends the, the slideshow. There That's the birth. Oh, that's the conception. Oh, look, Ron's going a bit mad there, isn't he? But why do I need to see this? This is what I'm saying. It was an awkward situation because she was happy with it. I was like, 
Oh, God. <laughs> you know what I mean? It was an odd-looking thing. I couldn't say, oh, it looks like you, because that would be a diss. <laughs> Speaking of flies, though, and that, um, they've, they've got one, right? I was out with Ricky, right, and he was reading the paper. There was a story there about a fly that its eyesight was bad or something, and they've made it a pair of glasses, and it had a picture of a house fly wearing... OK, this is, this is incredible, Steve. Can I, can I take over? Uh, hang on, let me just, just need to finish a couple of questions for that. So he's got... There's a small fly, and they've made it a pair of glasses... Yeah. ..so that it can see better. Yeah. And your concern is what? Well, again, it's just that thing of we're, we're looking after everything now. Aren't Sorry, we? I've got to come in here, Steve. All right. I showed you, you the story. Saw it. You saw it. It was a picture of a, a house fly with a pair of glasses, glasses right? on. Yeah. Right. It was about a one sentence thing. Mm. It was about how far technology's come. Yeah. And, and a group of scientists out. using um, microscopy, right, and uh, um, uh, laser tools had. As an exhibition, shown that they could make a pair of glasses smaller to fit on a house. They put it on there and they've taken a picture of it, and it's on as a display. At no point was it actually because the fly had bad eyesight. The fly was presumably dead. It was purely an art installation or a show of technology. I thought you were going to say, Rick, that you drawn the uh, glasses on there, <laughs> 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 and he believed it. Like there's a bearded lady in this paper. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, got, my God, Tony Blair looks like Adolf Hitler. <laughs> no. <laughs> what What do you think of that, though? But they did it as an experiment. Out. Yeah, but all things start as an experiment. But why would they make a pair of glasses but for a fly? How, how would they know he had short, a bad eyesight? How would they know it was the same fly? Bumping into stuff. I don't know. Bumping into stuff. It's just it's just that thing, innit, of human nature is something's wrong with something, let's fix it. And they, and they try and help people out all the time, don't they? When no. you, you know, We are, we're always doing it. <laughs> we're always trying to help people out instead of just going... You've been dealt a duff card. Cope with it. <laughs> <laughs> Came up with a good idea. We'll um, be the judge of that. Mm. Uh, well, I, I do it now. <laughs> it's not a good idea. Okay. Okay. I, I'm, I'm, I, I'm sticking my neck out here. Um, but yeah. uh, I right. think this isn't going to be a good idea. Okay. Thoughts? Well, I'm, I'm going to agree with you. I'm going to second that motion. Okay. Let's see. Let's see if we're, let's see if we're both right. See through skin. <laughs> <laughs> High five, Rick. <laughs> Why are they hanging about round there? <laughs> Why are seals going? Do you know what? It's cold. I'm sick of it here. It's windy all the time. What have you? And I'm getting a club on the head. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Because they're, they're meant to be quite bright in terms of animals and that, aren't they? Yeah. So why are they knocking about them parts? I don't know. Say like if, if seals died out right would 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 that be a problem we've done this. we've been through this before Carl. everything has a knock-on effect even a seal that's sort of in between something already it's between a fish and a <laughs> and a <laughs> dog <laughs> in it i knew you were gonna say dog <laughs> it's not between a fish and a dog what do you think evolution does do you, just, fish I, to never dog understand it. Maybe what do you mean it's between a fish and a dog i'm just saying it's it so was a perfectly evolved mammal that re-entered the <laughs> the water i imagine and then got streamlined and it I, I mean it's between a fish and a dog but why not have one and the other why not have like you know you've got a dog you've got a fish no it's Anything not between a fish and a dog it's not between a fish and a dog i don't know what between means i don't know what this I, is it again about <laughs> saving everything all the time what is it doing <laughs> what's he doing Everyone's feeling sorry for him all the time. Save the seal and all that. What's it doing? Why are we saving it? <laughs> Let's just ask that question. What's it doing? <laughs> I don't know what to say. It's between a fish and a dog. Problem, wouldn't it? We're changing everything all the time, aren't we? I mean, there's some fella who was looking at on the internet. Um, identical twins, right? They were sort of sick of looking like each other. So they were like, what can we do, right? And one of the twins said, you have my arm, right? <laughs> and he, he had his arm taken off and stuck on his, his twin, so his twin's got, like, three arms. No, it's not true. It's on the website. <laughs> no, it's not what? true. What, um, for a laugh? They were born so what, they for no, what, just what, like, what doctor's doing this, then? Well, they're old enough to sort of say, this is what we want, and... No, 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 no. Doctors don't go, well, if he wants another arm, and I'll take... Uh, they don't... Doctors don't do that. 
What sort of practice? Is this doctor going around and go, Dr. Jekyll? I mean, Carl, think of what you're no, saying. But we, Where would he have stopped? Can you put his head on my knee? No, it's up to you. <laughs> no, sign you're this. Paying. If you sign this, you can give my consent. <laughs> but, but we, you know, it isn't. Oh, what, what do you think these doctors are doing? Just to do as they're told. They don't do as they're told. They do if someone wants it, and, and twins, sort of, it can get you down, can't it? Being a twin, because it's like... Sorry, what would this solve, though? I thought you said he, he, he gave one of them a, a bigger nose or a beard or two front teeth that would, to make them look different, right? Not... I'll tell you what we could do. Go on. Um, would you like one arm? Go on, what are you thinking? Well, me three, you one, therefore not twins. <laughs> Novelty. I mean, you are a mental man. But they can do it now, can't they? There's no sort of... There's, there's no line drawn anymore. They don't go, you're crazy, we're not going to do that. Yeah, in Saw 2, not in the real world. No, they don't do things like all this. Right, there's another bloke, right? I don't know the sort of full ins and outs of it. Go on, you surprise me. But <laughs> what he asked for, um, something happened to his his, his tackle. Right? His penis. Uh, yeah, right. Um, so he was at the doctor's and they were like, oh, what can you do for me? It's a bit embarrassing, I've got nothing down there, right? <laughs> so they were like looking at it going, yeah. Um, Doctor, I don't know if he started like rubbing his chin with his finger or something. Looked down, he's thinking, <laughs> got an idea. Um, you know, you've got a lot of fingers. How many of them do you use? The patient's like, yeah, I see what you're thinking. <laughs> they cut off one of his fingers, sewn that on to where his, his tackle is. He's happy. Well, that's different though, isn't it? Well, that's where they've really taken different. tissue. <laughs> no, but they've, I assume they, they fashioned it into more of a knob than a finger. If you were doing that, use a sausage. I mean, why lose a finger? For well, <laughs> I'll tell you why. Because your finger has your, your tissue, your blood type, and therefore would graft uh, to near testicles. A sausage is a thing <laughs> that's made by a butcher out of offal, okay, that really can't be grafted onto any part of the human yeah, body. That's why they very rarely use any meat products yeah, in, uh, in surgery. surgery. <laughs> I know, yeah. Use, well, I mean, why not use a sausage? You're a mental case. I always remember this story when I was a kid about some bloke, he had um, throat cancer, right? And his doctor said, carry on with your life, right? It's not going to be that good, but just carry on, um, but don't eat meat. And he was like, oh, I love meat. He's like, yeah, but just don't, you know, have your veg, keep yourself strong, but don't be eating that anyway. He was, he was fed up because he loved his meat. And his, his wife was feeling a bit sorry for him one day and thought, you know, I'm sick of him looking fed up and that all he wants is some meat, for God's sake, give him some meat. So she goes to the butchers, gets him a big piece of, like, steak and what have you. He can't believe it. He's like, oh, brilliant, cheers for that. Anyway, um, <laughs> he's got the meat on his plate just about to tuck in and the cancer comes out <laughs> from his throat. What? No, it's some, I know, it sounds really weird, but it's something that, that I was told about years ago when I was growing up. What are you talking about? It was just some some bad illness, some cancer thing, and it sort of it was it was coming out waiting for the meat. It was it was, <laughs> it was sort of dying. Again, it, I get a lot of your medical uh, knowledge is from it's uh, from the film Alien. So this guy with throat cancer, okay, yeah. as opposed to it being a disease of the cell, it was like a living the alien. It oh, was alien. so it was a, it was a, uh, it was the animal. It was the little animal cancer. That's why what he are you wasn't talking allowed to eat about? meat. He wasn't allowed to eat meat. So it's sitting there, so it's actually sitting there and throwing, why, I'll tell you what I'd have done, if I'd have had some cancer in my throat, I'd go, <coughs> there you go, rid of that. What are you talking about? So what happened? Uh, <coughs> he choked to death on this thing and the wife was like, oh, I shouldn't give him the meat after all. Just That's listen a bollock to you, story. To it's, it's all, there's loads of weird stuff like that there that is. happens in medical stuff. Well, the terrible thing is, you, if you if you got testicular cancer and you eat meat, your bollocks come out of your trousers, and they're they're all over the plate, yeah. and you have to be asked to leave the restaurant. Get straight into it. A band from the Conga have won the best newcomers in a Radio Three competition. They use pots and pans for instruments. It says that the Conga is a poor, sad place. So why do people do that happy dance at the end of parties called the Conga? Right. One <laughs> is the Congo. <laughs> There's no place called the Conga. <laughs> they come from a place called the Congo. <laughs> <laughs> Conga! <laughs> Fucking hell, you're such a 
met Suzanne at Euston Station. I said I would sort out the tea tonight, so I called the curry house. The fella couldn't understand me. I asked for two poppadoms. He kept saying, how many? I kept saying two. He still couldn't understand. I said one more than one. He understood. When we picked up the food and took it home, there were five poppadoms in the bag. There is a restaurant somewhere that sells knobs to eat. No, there's not. There is. No, there's not. No, there is. It says that women can't eat too many of them, and if you want a seal's knob for dinner, you have to book in advance. Right, it's gobbledygook. This is the ramblings of a madman again. It's a trend, he writes. It won't last long. It'll be like hummus. <laughs> Called Ricky and asked what the difference is between the mind and the brain. Yeah, he did. <laughs> That's a hell of a phone yeah, call Yeah, unbelievable. Unbelievable. Ricky did explain, but I can't remember what he said. I wondered at what age you are when the mind kicks in, okay? Ricky changed the subject and said there is an island called Spider Island. There's nothing but spiders on it. A bloke went to visit the island and said there was a thousand types of spider in one tree. What do you think about that? What do you think about an island that's just full of spiders? Um, I don't know, because you need spiders. I don't know what they do, but they say a world without spiders like wouldn't wouldn't be good but but they sort of do they do something there's something about if you did get rid of them all it would have an effect well of course it would any get rid of anything it would have an effect mm, not not everything though <laughs> like i've said you know jellyfish and what have you who well, it, knows it's it's 97 percent water or something yeah so how much are they doing just g give them another three percent make them water <laughs> and that's, that's that's more useful <laughs> <laughs> make them water. Oh, God. Went into the gadget shop today. It's full of stuff that we don't need. Gadget used to be a good word that made you think of James Bond with all his gadgets. The best thing I could find in the shop was a clock that ran on potatoes. <laughs> we are definitely going backwards. <laughs> I agree. Well, what's the... Who cares about that? A, a, you know, a little electrical impulse. So what? Had a night out with old schoolmate found out about more of the other lads I went to school with. One is living underground. <laughs> what do you mean living underground? Not like a mole. Do you yeah. mean he's got a basement or do you mean he digs a hole every night? My mate went to visit him and he said it's all, it had been raining really heavily and that. And it's all the rain's running what in. What do you mean he went to visit him? He went down here. What's that? That's an hole in the ground. Yeah, come in. Come he, just, he just said, oh, come, come out to his. And he's, he's living underground. What do you mean he's living he, he, underground? He, he's happy down there. He said it was really muddy and what have you. He said he won't be going back to visit him. I believe this, though. I believe someone he went to school with now lives in a hole. <laughs> that doesn't shock me. That's to that's He's spent to far too long with him if that now you're just happy to accept. I totally accept that. I, I'd be surprised if I walked around uh, where he lived that there weren't more people living in holes. <laughs> his dad wanted to throw his budgie on the fire. True. His budgie died, his dad said, let's throw it on the fire. I mean, his mum, what did your mum do? She just was worried about the other bird that was left, so she made it a bit of company by getting a rock, getting a feather off the dead budgie, sticking it on the rock, put, putting it in the cage. So a bit man living in a hole it's not is unusual. not that bizarre. Right, carry on. Watch the <laughs> film about Hitler. Didn't watch all of it as it was subtitled. Can't be doing with that. Ask Suzanne if cinemas are full of deaf people when they're showing subtitled films. She said, shh, I'm trying to watch it. I said, what do you mean, shh? It's subtitled, I can make as much noise as I want. Yeah. She's you, a lucky, lucky woman. <laughs> you must be a joy to watch a subtitled film. I mean, the concentration is, is, is up there already. It's not as easy as when you're hearing it, because, mm. you, you know, you, you read things, but, you know, it's possible. If you had a, a, a buffoon going, I'm just going to sit here and make as much noise as I want, What's the point of that? <laughs> yeah. Do that in a cinema. Just walk into a subtitle film and go, right, everybody, let's all do the Congo. We're having our bathroom done. The bathroom man was around at nine this morning. We weren't allowed to use the shower because it all had to be bone dry before we could use his waterproof filler. Not that waterproof, then. <laughs> Went for a brew with Ricky. We talked about monkeys and how they are closer to humans than they are to apes and how bees will drink cider to get off their heads. Now and again, there is a bee that lets the drinking get in the way of the work, and other bees sting it to death. Blimey. Mm. Yeah, well, uh, uh, there are bees. They love a drink. Um, and uh, they can they can just... They, they will uh, drink pure alcohol. They love getting off it, and they fall down, and they're drunk, right? But some bees 
get uh, addicted in, in the same sort of percentage as human addiction, like 10% of bees, they can't get enough of it. They take uh, ethanol, they take cider apples and that. And then when they get back to the hive, they go in a bit pissed and they've got guard bees and they go, come on, we've all had a drink. Bases. Yeah, they sort of are, right? And they push them away and they push them away again. Then the next time they go, right, I've had enough. And they give it a good idea. And uh, Carl couldn't get over this. I saw his face. But I, I knew that he was thinking of that bee with sort of like eyes rolling around his head, a little bit belligerent with his jacket on backwards. Yeah. You know, and the bouncer going, come on, come on, son, we've all had enough. Let's move away, <laughs> yeah. move away. You're not coming in, right? You're wearing trainers. Yeah, you know, you're wearing, you're wearing three pairs of trainers. <laughs> yeah. And uh, yeah. I, I'm, I'm sick of it, you know. But what I did find out, because I went, went home and went on the computer trying to find out about drunk bees knocking about, um, they're not actually meant to fly. It's only because they don't know. Fly. Well, no, but they're, they're, if, if they were told that you're not actually designed to fly, they, they wouldn't bother. No, th this, is the, this is that thing that goes around, that aerodynamically, on the, on the face of it, looking at the size of the wings and the, and the, and the body proportions and everything, that it, that it's a surprise that they can fly, okay? It's not that no one's ever told them they can't, and as soon as someone tells me not meant to fly, they all fall out of the sky going, oh, what are we doing? Like in a cartoon. <laughs> No, but uh, it's, it's something about the confidence and that. At the moment, nobody's saying to There's nothing to do with the confidence. There is no such thing as confidence in bees. A bee never loses its nerve. That's not why it drinks. Because what are you drinking for? I'm just not confident anymore. There's no point to turn to the bottle. I can't go up there again. You're an idiot. Here's an interesting fact. If the, the frog annoyed you, this might annoy you. A blind chameleon will still change colour to match its surroundings. You're aware that the chameleon can... Yeah, whatever it, whatever it sits on. Yeah. But then what, what happens when you put one of them on a mirror? <laughs> no, do, does it get stressed out or what? What's, what's it copying? <laughs> well, it probably doesn't need to copy anything because it looks at itself and it goes, oh, it look, looks like that. It's brilliant. God, that was fast. That's the fastest I've ever done that. That is brilliant. So they, they can go any colour. There's nothing. You can put them on anything. And they'll go to the thing. I, I, I don't want you to have a chameleon because you'd just be trying to see what it could and couldn't Try and do. Catch it out. Oh no, yeah. Pop it on some tartan. But yeah. again, <laughs> say like say like the frog thing, right? Pop it on the telly. Yeah. <laughs> couldn't do it fast enough. <laughs> Why does the chameleon need that skill of copying a colour? Because at the end of the day, that's that's mainly sticking in the, in the woods, isn't it? By trees, by grass. Right. Why can't it just stay green? That's all it needs. That those colour changes are only for camouflage, aren't they? I don't know. Some of them are for attraction. Some of them to show moods, anger. No, but I just think we're encouraging them. You see, maybe this is evolution or whatever. But at the end of the day, because they can change colour, they're wandering out of their area. They can be wandering about, you know, through a car park and everything, just because they'll go, well, I don't want to get seen. Change the colour of co concrete. Whereas or into the colour of a Fiat Punto. But they should just stay green. Stay green. Right, stay in the woods and stay safe. <laughs> I love this public information for <laughs> chameleons. Words of advice for chameleons. <laughs> oh god. Stay green. Stay in the woods. Oh. Stay safe. Good night. Oh god. Um, right. <laughs> uh, the only time a turkey whistles is when it panics. <laughs> Christmas time then. Yeah. What do you think of that, Carl? It goes from one extreme to another, doesn't it? You've got a frog. He's going mental. It's not going mental. Killing thousands of people. No, that's not. That's got that sort of power. Then you got a turkey who's whistling for help. <laughs> <laughs> you think that you should redress the balance a little bit? You want to give? What would you do? Give the frog the ability to kill 500 and the turkey 500? Um, I don't think it should be killing. I reckon 10. 10 because you've made your point with 10, haven't you? Do you well, think that he's got a thousand in his lifetime? Like he's got a thousand to kill? I don't think you understand. I just think he doesn't it really kill a thousand people. It doesn't mean someone goes, Frog, you have the power to kill one thousand people in your lifetime. Choose them wisely. But I just think if it needs that sort of power, power. it should be fighting evil. Well, it's not. <laughs> it's, it's knocking about the wrong area, isn't it? If it's under that much danger, move. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking the other day about, um, you know, your body and everything, because it is amazing, isn't it, how it works. Oh, yeah, yeah. Does the brain control you, or are you controlling the brain? 
I don't know if I'm in charge of mine. <laughs> <laughs> Nor do I, There's Carl. a surprise. Nor do I, Carl. No, do, do you know what I mean, though, by that? Does well, the brain control you, or do well, you control when you, the when, brain? Like, don't you ever sort of think sometimes? Say if you're making... But you I, are I was the making, brain. No, no, but I was making a shopping list, right? Going, right, I need some uh, rice, uh, kidney beans, uh, and I thought I had everything, and I sort of was rolling up the paper, and then, then something went, oh, an onion. Your so brain did Something that. went an onion, was yeah. it Suzanne? No, well, my brain, my brain sort of went, you forgot something. Yeah. I, I didn't think I'd forgot. I was no, no, you that... are your brain. No, no, <laughs> but don't you understand, the brain, my brain was in, I was in control of my brain <laughs> when I was writing down rice and kidney beans. But you're not in charge of the onion. That's another part of the brain that's in charge of the onion. <laughs> the onion, the onion sector. Yeah. No, but I put the paper away. Putting my coat on, ready to go, ready but to go and get the rice. Yes, yes, but, yes, but your onion lobe kicked in. <laughs> what? So you, you put the paper in your pocket, you got the coat on, then you just suddenly hear. Then it nowhere. was just like it was onion. like. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not even thinking about that shopping list. It's in my pocket. I'm thinking, do I need my gloves? It's cold out. Yeah. And suddenly, onion. And it was like, oh yeah, onion. Yeah, I had to get the paper out. So you know, what I'm saying is, it was in, the, it was in charge. The brain, the brain, the mind, the brain is the... What are you doing? But Who's in that's charge? That's just, you forgot, you forgot the onion and then you remember the onion. You must have forgotten things in the past. No, but not, not like that, not where, like, it just made me think, that was weird, who, who reminded me of that? You did. <laughs> yeah, but I'm not... <laughs> no, you are your brain. It's not like there's you, then there's a brain, then there's an extra one looking down at it, oh, the, the you know, the, the, the meta brain, the thing above it. No, but your brain... Your... <sighs> How does your brain work? <laughs> you give it information, don't you? Well, it takes. Do you mean you give it information? Well, it's if doing I, it, if I it? sat in a room with nothing, not feeding it anything, it wouldn't know anything. No, but it, it, it's this thing but that there's two yous. It's this thing that there's there's, there's Carl this... and Carl's brain. Yeah, there's, there's not there's not a duality in this. If you, if if you go if you go, come on, come on now, think. That's the brain saying that to itself. It's it, it's not. There's not two people in there having an argument. Coming, come on, brain, and the brain's going, "Oh, don't you start? I was thinking then." And the other thing's going, "Brain, onion," and the brain goes, "Carl, onion." You are your brain. If you are anything, you are you are your mind, your brain, your collection of memories, your personality. You're not what you look like. To answer your question, Carl. Uh, what do you think of then? You were thinking of a tortoise on a skateboard then when I said that last <laughs> sentence, weren't you? <laughs> Not your own. I'm not being funny though, so if you have a body transplant, right? And you're there, you're at home, yeah. naked. You look down. Yeah. Lovely penis and a set of testicles. Yeah. Right? What do you do with them? What do you mean? What am I doing with them? Well, do you like them? Well, you wouldn't you wouldn't mess about with them as much as if they were your own. <laughs> but if you did mess about with them, would you feel guilty that you were messing about with another man's testicles and penis? And it's the full body. Yeah. No, because they're not my hands either. So what you're doing is watching someone else wank. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's the uh, the ever-changing jingle for Carl's diary, excerpts of which we like to read each week. Walk through Covent Garden. There were five of them mimes knocking about. I don't understand why people take pictures of mimes. Everyone looks like a mime in a picture. <laughs> That's so true. That's really true. If the point is they're staying still, if that's their skill, a picture won't tell that story. That's, that's absolutely true. <laughs> My dad took the cat to be put down today because it kept bumping into things since losing its sight. My mum said she's not going to get another one. She said the parrot is looking worried as it's seen the budgie and the cat go in the space of three months. <laughs> Your mum said the parrot's looking worried. What's the, what, what, what happened to the cat then? It, it, it gets into a lot of fights. It lost one eye, and uh, then it got into another fight and lost another. Oh, and no. it was just walking around, bumping into stuff. The, I mean, the vet sort of said, oh, we can do stuff to keep it alive and all that, but it's a bit out of order, isn't it? Because it costs a fortune, they shouldn't tell you. But... Mum and Dad can't afford to have eyes put on it and stuff. No, you, you can't put, have eyes put on a cat no, anyway. No, but they said, oh, we, we can do something here. 
We can have, have its eyes sorted out. But it w- oh. I don't think you should be allowed cats. Why? Not the Pilkington family. Why not? Well, they, they have keep good dying. lives. Yeah, I know, but they have good lives whilst they're still knocking about. It's just that we get through them. <laughs> <laughs> It's a good job you're not going to have kids. Oh, God almighty. I can't believe it. A mate sent me a story on email about a bloke in China who has this weird illness that means he can't have his picture taken. <laughs> that's, not the, that's not the weird bit. If he tries, his body doesn't appear in the photo. Don't talk shit. He has had group pictures taken and everyone appeared apart from him. Don't talk shit. The that's story bollocks. had a picture next to it of a family photo and it said he was stood at the back, but you couldn't see him. Right. He wasn't in the picture. He was in the picture. No, he wasn't in the picture. He's done loads of tests and stuff. No, there's don't, I haven't done loads of tests. This is bollocks. There's no way this is scientifically possible. What's what? his want? Yeah, now he's wanted. Just a white bit of paper up on the police wall. Have you seen this man? What man? If you see him, tell us. <laughs> You're talking shit. <laughs> spoke to Ricky about trips to the moon. Oh. He was up for going just to see what the world looks like. I came up with the idea of a giant mirror on the moon that would reflect the world back. He had a few questions, but <laughs> but I had the answers. Yeah. He changed the subject. I won. Right. My first question was, how would you get it up there? He said, bit by bit. <laughs> That'd be a good mirror then, wouldn't it? <laughs> I said, how big would it be? He went, you'd still need a telescope. I said, how would you get it on the right side of the moon, always facing the right? He went, he went, does the moon move then? I went, yes. And if we don't like the mirror on the moon, we can always wallpaper over it. <laughs> <laughs> it's Suzanne's birthday tomorrow, so I've got to get her something. I sometimes think it would be best if we didn't celebrate birthdays. I think people would live a bit longer if they didn't know how old they were. Age puts restrictions on things. She said something about wanting one of them posh badges to put on her coat. I will look for one later. I love the fact that around the time that you've got to buy Suzanne her birthday present you think that birthday presents are a bad idea got up early it's Suzanne's birthday gave her the card a present she was well happy with her posh badge she wore it to work it's quite nice quite nice to hear a moment where she was actually happy for once in your company they always say when you get someone a present you should buy them something they wouldn't buy themselves daft rule I want something I would buy myself if I had the money when I was young me auntie Nora got me a present I wouldn't buy myself it was a t-shirt with her face on. <laughs> We've been away filming in a sweltering London. We've had a heat wave here in the capital city, haven't we, Carl? It's been hot, right? Been up to 100 degrees, record-breaking temperatures. Yeah. What you been doing, though? Getting to see the place, having loads of walks, and I like to have walks. You know, watching what like people do. Like a dog. Are doing. <laughs> yeah, when when he jumps off the couch and starts <laughs> exactly. scratching against the door, Suzanne thinks it's time. <laughs> it's, it's, walk. it's just good thinking time, though, isn't it? Uh, as well, having a walk, you got no other clutter going on around you, and right. you just think about a lot of stuff. And you know, like like say with the weather being hot and stuff, a lot of insects knocking about. Right. So I've just been watching them. <laughs> so, so while we've been filming, you've been watching insects. Yeah, just seeing because everybody knows insects are out there, but no one's keeping an eye on them. <laughs> Why, <laughs> what are they up to? What are you worried about? Loads of, Steve, you won't be laughing like that if you if you'd watch them because th- th- they do some weird stuff and that yeah. is what I mean. What yeah. sort of stuff? Any examples? Uh, I saw a bee have a heart attack. <laughs> <laughs> you saw a bee have a heart attack. Yeah. How were you sure it was a heart attack? Because what happened? I'd, I'd been. Did in it the... clutch its chest with all six legs? No, I'd were there some other little bee paramedics? No, no. I'd, I'd just been out in the park anyway, just looking at you know uh, caterpillars knocking about, uh, <laughs> butterflies and stuff. So I was sort of. <laughs> where's the, when Suzanne goes to work, she goes, Carl, don't you waste the day. I want you to do some constructive stuff. <laughs> but but the thing is, so I'd been in the park and I was aware of the insects that are around us more than like most of the time and i come out of the park just crossing like a, a sort of a busy road and what have you and i saw this bee to the right of me sort of in the air and it was a big one and i was a bit like oh let's watch that and um it just fell it fell from the air in front of me and it was on the pavement and i thought oh what's going on here and I, I looked at it for a bit and it was really still gave it a little kick just to see if there was any movement nothing stone sort of What's the saying? Stone cold dead. <laughs> yeah, 
Stone cold be dead. So, yeah. uh, that, that I like the fact that this bee suddenly saw Carl and had a heart attack. Yeah. It'd never seen anything that round before. Yeah. It just thought, it, it had approached him because he thought it was a sunflower. <laughs> My right. God, it's a giant walking orange. Every dream has come true. <laughs> No, but it just summed up life for me. I thought, that, that's, that's like us, isn't it, at the end of the day? They have heart attacks, stress. <laughs> you put it down to stress, do you? Well, it's in London, isn't it? You know, everything has stresses from living here. And they are bald, aren't they? They've got fur all over, but they lose the... And always overweight. <laughs> <laughs> it was a fat, bald bee! So what did you, it fell to the floor and you, you instantly, you just kicked it, you didn't attempt no, to revive it. No, I waited a second it. and just looked at it to see if there was any, you know, leg movement or wing. And there was nothing, and then when I sort of kicked it, it was sort of hard. It had hardened already, it was just... Rigor mortis had set in. Set in. So it put you in a bad mood for the day, because I know things like that can just send you over the edge for the day. Uh, death and that does a bit. Suzanne doesn't like me talking about death. What riveting conversations do you come up with? No, just things like uh, one of our mates has had a baby recently, and I just was saying, oh, when that's sort of our age, we'll nearly be dead. Think of that. <laughs> that's the first thing he says is a new life brought into the world. <laughs> I know. But when he's our age, we'll be dead. Yeah. No, it's Maybe they'll let you do the speech at the christening. Well, yeah, I've been watching loads of stuff. I've been watching Ants. You mentioned Ants. I've <laughs> uh, got a lot of moths in the house. They're sort of sad. I mean, you, you say it like it was a garden party. <laughs> yeah, well, but but all I'm saying is I look at more about what its life is like. Because if you watch something long enough, is what I'm saying, you can see that it's it's a bit clueless. It's the same way about ants or, you know, they're hard workers and all that. I watch one, it's going back and forth all the time. You go one way and then they stop and go the other way. They try to look busy in front of the mates. But if you watch one, <laughs> if you watch one long enough, it's back and forwards and it's like it's done nothing there. I'm going to carry this twig back and forth until I can knock off it for... There's a lot of that going on. Is there? Because uh, there's not. There's none of that going on. There is. <laughs> no, like I say, the moth. Depressing little sort of thing. <laughs> Why is it depressing? I haven't got eyes, has it? You just look at it, it, hasn't, it doesn't know what's going on. I just don't... I think if you haven't got eyes, you shouldn't have wings. <laughs> <laughs> That's a rule. If we could put that into practice, please. <laughs> That's a great rule. That's a fantastic rule, isn't it? Yeah. If you haven't got eyes, you shouldn't have wings. <laughs> ah. You know, when when you see them in films, they're, they're running about and that, and everybody likes an octopus. <laughs> but this one, that's on me. It, it was it was your fault, really, because you told me about that frog that's going about killing people. No, I didn't say that. Uh, so I looked it up on the internet at like other creatures and stuff. Dot and com. there's a. Uh, mm -hmm. There's uh, some octopus that's in the sea, uh, and what it does, y you don't even have to like threaten it. It just spits in the water, and if that stuff gets on you, does you in. Again, I'm, I, mm. so in a way, it's good knowledge because, I mean, I don't go in the sea anyway because it's full of stuff like that. But that's <laughs> just reassured me that I'm doing the right thing. If they're knocking about, just gozzing everywhere. <laughs> Uh, you don't even have to be near one. You don't even know if it's been spitting and stuff. It can kill you. It just seems unfair. I haven't armed it. I haven't gone near it. Why is it getting annoyed with me? It doesn't seem right. So that's where a knowledge has, has not helped that octopus out. Because now, when you eat them, I just think, yeah, have another one. Do you know what I mean? Get rid of them. <laughs> another conversation with himself. Another conversation with himself. Okay, Carl, I'm just going to throw an animal at you. Tell me how weird it is, what bits annoy you, how you change it, okay? A crab. How would it change it? Yeah. Does it annoy you? Do you think it's weird? Um, they are weird. <laughs> but they're at that size where they can get away with it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it suits them. Okay, um, good. Would it, would it change anything? Um, in a way, you know, what you're saying about things not working, he can't walk forwards. But so why hasn't something happened? Why haven't they said, you know what, these arms are too clumsy. We need to have them so they can slot away easier and we can pull them out when we need them. So they're <laughs> clumping around with them. Because they do struggle. You see them struggling with their arms. 
Yeah, they still are. They still do in that. They still design that way. <laughs> What's the weirdest animal? So you think the octopus is the weirdest animal on earth? Yeah. Why is it any weirder than a dog? Because it couldn't be further away from us. A dog has got human eyes. <laughs> If, if a jelly, honestly, if a jellyfish had a pair of eyes like ours, I probably wouldn't worry about him that much. Mm. But like I said to you, it's that way that they haven't got eyes, they're floating about. I can handle some fish. They look, they look like they've got eyes. You can make eye to eye contact with them. <laughs> what do you a jellyfish, what are you looking at? It's a snidey thing, like I've said to you. <laughs> you can see, see a lot in eyes. Do you know what I mean? They say, don't trust him. Why? It's his eyes. Jellyfish haven't even got any, and I don't trust them. In terms of. Um, design and everything and uh, if you lined everything up say if I'd come from another planet yeah. and everything was lined up in a row and they said right we're going to give you a crash course in what's knocking about on this planet Yeah. and you go right go on then and you go this is man here's a woman here's a dog, here's a cat here's an octopus, here's a I go hang on a minute what is this <laughs> Say if, if everything was at the same size as us, what would be the best thing to be? Say like a tarantula yeah. and a tiger, what would happen there? So a, a 15 stone tiger versus a 15 stone tarantula? Yeah. Well, I imagine a 15 stone tarantula. Right, so it's just weird, that, isn't it? It's a good job that they're small, yet things are getting bigger because we're messing with the world. But it's a ridiculous thing to say, isn't it? Because what would it eat? 15 stone, the biggest you'll find is like a foot long beetle or something like that. It's big though, isn't it? Yeah, and that's about as big as they get. You just so I wouldn't worry that. about it. Mm. <laughs> Again, based on nothing, he queries it's not, you. But it's like fish, isn't it? How they say about a goldfish. Yeah. That thing about a woman who went on holiday and stuck mm. it in a bath. Mm. She came back, it was seven foot. Right, that didn't happen. No, that's a well-known thing about goldfish. No, it's goldfish. not a well-known thing. What? I'll tell you why. Because a fish would only grow to its surroundings anyway. So... Yeah, that's what I'm saying. You have to put it in a bigger tank. Yeah, in a bath. No, a seven-foot fish in a bath. It just fit the bath exactly, did it? When she got back off holiday... Don't talk shit. It's what a well was it known... eating? What was it eating? How long was she gone for? <laughs> Two million years? <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> she, she went to Mars and back. Ted, you're not going to believe this. Come up here. How many fish do you see that have naturally died? It's always been caught by a man or a shark set it. <laughs> <laughs> you don't just see dead fish washed up, do you? Well, most things that don't die of old age. Yeah, that's weird though, isn't it? Well, no, because it's a, you know, it's a jungle out there. No, worse than the sea. The sea is like full of, uh, you've got an enemy around every rock. <laughs> I love it! I love it! And then it's like a wall into crabs exactly. and young squid. <laughs> it's, like, it's, it's, it's like the policeman that comes into your school. Yeah, yeah. Carl, have you ever seen the programme Inside the Actors Studio? Uh, no. James Lipton interviews famous actors and gets world, uh, words of advice about, uh, you know, how they work and how they act. But at the end, he always asks a series of questions which is based on a French series of questions that a guy called Bruno Pivot used to uh, to give people when he interviewed them. So I'm going to ask you some of these questions, just interesting to see what your response is. And, you know, answer them quickly, you don't have to think about them too much. Mm. What is your favourite curse word? Uh, I don't think I've got one. Uh, knobhead. <laughs> that sums everything up, and I think it's... But you, you wouldn't call your nan a knobhead, would you? What would you call a nan? Well, yeah. knobhead's all right, isn't it? Because she 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 sort of gets it. It's one of them things that everybody understands, but it's not too offensive. Right. What a knobhead. <laughs> <laughs> what would you do though if you were swimming, right? It was a nice little thing. You're on holiday, right? And there's this octopus there, and you're going around, right? And you, and you just see it start spitting at you, poison. What yeah, would you say? Well, well, it's too late then, isn't it? And I'd kick it, <laughs> and I'd say, knobhead. I, I would. Uh, but what's the point? What's the point in getting annoyed now? Because it's done its <laughs> it's done its stuff, hasn't it? <laughs> I don't know how you kick it and go in no bed <laughs> under the water. What is this octopus thinking? Oh god! Oh, I go you fucking eight-legged shit! I'm you, not bothered. I'm not bothered. I don't know what you're you saying. Fucking.
fucking cunt yeah. of a mollus. I'll just spit at you again. It's not bothered. You slimy little fucking boneless wanker. This is why the face Are you is still good. talking to the octopus? <laughs> Jingle, of course, signifies another reading from Carl Pilkington's diary. We went to the park and had a brew. Suzanne read the paper while I played with a ladybird. <laughs> I mean, it's like a child, isn't it? It is like what a child would do. Suzanne read the paper while I played with a ladybird. <laughs> His only friend is a beetle. <laughs> it climbed up my arm. It struggled on me hairs. This is in detail, then. Yeah, 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 yeah. It kept stopping every now and then, and was rubbing its head with its right arm. It did it about four times and always used its right arm. It rested for about five minutes, then flew off. Sunday. Had a bit of a to-do with Suzanne, because she wanted a lion today. I ate this. Once you're awake, you should get up. I got up and put the radio on really loud. She eventually got up. I told her insects don't have lions, so we shouldn't. <laughs> I mean, you must be fucking unbearable to live with. <laughs> you must be a nightmare. No, I've just started, because I've watched insects a lot, I don't want to keep going on about them, because we're a bit insect heavy. But at the end of the day, if we if we copied insects, we wouldn't go far wrong. I don't know what you mean, though. One minute you're saying they're great, then the next minute you'll slag them off. Yeah, I'll slag some of them off if I don't know what they're doing, but because I've studied them a bit longer... I just think they, they do. You it haven't right. studied them. He, he thinks he's like Darwin. You, but you just slagged them off and go, no, you think people, that insects are doing stuff? They're not. It yeah, goes there, then it goes back again. The ant was. The ant was messing about. But only that one, the others were carrying stuff. That's what I'm saying. These snidey ones in everything. In every everything in the world, you get a hierarchy. <laughs> oh, long words. Ooh. Some new sea thing has been found. <laughs> That's the headlines on the news. <laughs> it wasn't found by sea experts. It was found on eBay. Someone was selling it for a fiver. I don't see the point in buying something that you don't know what it is. What do you I... mean? What do you mean? It was... It was. Someone's found some sort of shell with a thing living in it. Right. Um, they thought, oh, I've never seen one of these before. I can flog it on eBay. Someone bought it and then wanted to look after it, went to some sea expert, and they said, oh, I don't know what that is. That's 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 the story. It's just weird how stuff's being found on eBay. No, it wasn't found on eBay, though, was it? Yeah, but that's where the specialist people sort of picked up on it. It's just weird that. I mean, all, all I was saying is I wouldn't want one. If you don't know how to, if it's a new creature, you don't know what what makes it happy. When you get a kitten, you go stroke its head, loves it, right? And you can do that knowing that it's liking it. If I had a little seashell, and you go, does it sit in water? I don't know. Do you know what I mean? You could end up doing more damage. So that's why I wouldn't want it. It's nice to have rules, isn't it? It's nice to know what you're doing with something. Well, as you write in the diary, it's like if an alien landed and wanted to live oh. with you. <laughs> as much fun as it might sound, it wouldn't be long before you got annoyed with it because it wouldn't eat the food you gave it. That's what I'm saying, but I couldn't have a go at it because it might not like pasta. <laughs> it might not. <laughs> Everyone likes pasta. Wow. Woke up to some interesting news. It's good when this happens, because it sets me up for the day ahead. If it's miserable news, it affects my day. It said on the news that they have found two new flies. Fucking <laughs> hell, <laughs> more insects! What have you done? Is that all you've done this summer? Bong. Just <laughs> Trouble in the Middle East. Bong. Two new flies found. Ladybird climbs up arm. <laughs> they were found in the UK, <laughs> and they were found close to each other. Maybe this happened because they were different than the other flies and weren't expected to hang about together, so that's why they knocked about with each other. That would happen, wouldn't it? What do you mean? There's two new flies. <laughs> what do you mean? Does it mean there are two new flies that are a different species? species? Yeah, two new species, and they found them close to each other, right? Yeah, but they, they didn't mean there was one of each. No. Yeah, yeah, they did. They found two different ones. No. No, they have. Seriously, I know that. That's right. That's a fact. So you've got, like, I don't know the names of them. They give them odd names, don't they? Well, say yeah. you call it A and Fly B, right? Yeah. Fly A, I don't know. Uh, was say that's yeah. orange. <laughs> this is just... B. Fly B, yeah. No, this is but, painful. No, but I'm just painful. making it easier but Fly B wears okay. a little hat. He's got yeah, a little hat. Right, yeah, fine. Now, they found the orange one. I went, look at this over here. 
which is a bit weird. And they've gone, oh, that's a new species. Log it, whatever. Mm. And then the other one went, oh, 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 keep your pen handy. Look at this one, it's got a hat on. So then they, they found them both within the same distance. I don't know why that sentence means. Keep going, keep going, keep going. They, no, found, him both, finish. they found him both within the same <laughs> distance. <laughs> but without <laughs> interrupting him, let him finish this, no. this point. Let me just make one thing clear. Carl Pilkin just said, they found them both within the same distance. <laughs> Think of that! Don't know what it means, but go on, let him finish this, this point. So, so what I mean is, they weren't knocking about with other normal houseflies, because they were probably sort of going, oh, he's a bit weird. Leave it. <laughs> Yet, because the other one was also odd, they're, not, they're hanging about with each other. Don't you understand that? Why is that such an odd yeah. concept? Because <laughs> you think you think of it as like two little um, uh, new kids in school. Yeah. They, they find that they're both new and they they've got so many. Yeah, they're, both, they're both goths. So yeah. they don't hang out yeah. And this was on the news, was it? Yeah, just on the radio. Yeah. I know if I looked into that story, it would be ninety percent wrong. Bit tired today because didn't get to sleep as early as I wanted, due to a moth getting in the bedroom. Fuck me! I got it in a glass and looked at it for a bit and then let it go because Suzanne wanted to go to sleep. Looked up some interesting news. Some people dug up an old body in Ireland. Turns out it's well old and was here when dinosaurs were here. The really weird bit is it had hair gel in its hair. Right, what is it? A fella. Well, no, it wasn't around when dinosaurs were here then. Just a bit after. Right, fine. A lot after, yeah, go on. It's not the age bit, that's amazing. It's the fact of, there's a fella, won't have even had shoes on his feet. Right. And yet he was worried about his hairstyle. Right, well that's definitely not true either. There was a man on the radio doing poetry, says Carl in his diary. I thought I'd have a go at doing a poem about today. <clears throat> not really. He had, Steve, I'm, I'm a little bit queasy. He hasn't really written a poem. He's written a, a small poem. No, he hasn't really. Yes. If moths had eyes... <laughs> <laughs> let, let me read the poem, okay? Oh, fuck. You wouldn't interrupt T.S. Eliot. Okay, 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 okay. Oh, okay. If moths had eyes, would they be happier? How do they know they're not dead? <laughs> Cavemen hunting for food, but not before they style the hair on their head. What would last longer in dinosaur times? A blind man didn't stand a chance. Not with all them rocks about. I'd rather be a blind moth. Right. <laughs> it may be the greatest poem ever written. Is there a creative decision have, for that? Can we have Carl read that? By Sorry, means, yeah. just, uh, no, just, just you read it as you would like to. So this is, uh, imagine this, right? Okay. This is going out all over the world. And now, um, Carl Pilkington, new poet from Manchester. Now living in uh, London, England, would like to read a, a poem. If moths had eyes, would they be happier? <laughs> How do they know they're not dead? Cavemen hunting for food, but not before they style the air on their head. What would last longer in dinosaur times? A blind man didn't stand a chance. Not with all them rocks about. I'd rather be a blind moth. I think he feels as though the final line, I'd rather be a blind moth, is going to be one of those great, you know, those, it, a summation that the, somehow the moth is a metaphor, I'd the caveman. Be a blind moth. No, but there's no I'm metaphor doing, in that. He really does mean he'd, he'd rather, rather be, be a blind, blind moth. moth. Yeah, well, I'm just because I've looked at the day's news. Are you getting into poetry now, properly? I really like it, yeah. Right, I did two about jellyfish. Excellent. Uh, I don't like jellyfish. They're not a fish, they're just a blob. They don't have eyes, fins or scales like a cod. They float about blind, stinging people in the seas. And no one eats jellyfish with chips and mushy peas. <laughs> Get rid of them. <laughs> and then there's just a shorter one of the about jellyfish. Um, it would be spiteful to put jellyfish in a trifle. <laughs> It certainly would. Uh, so. <laughs> That's great. That's really good. Because it's jelly. He's, he's, 
he's done us there, yeah, Steve. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's yeah, a really yeah. good poem. Can we always do that, Carl? Can we always find a day, right, and always sum it up in, in your in thoughts, a poem. a poem, just like that? It would be spiteful to put jellyfish in a trifle. Yeah. What's been going on? What's been going on? I've been to hospital. I was rushed to hospital, right, emergency and that. I had a uh, tube put on my knob. You had a tube put up your knob? Yeah. What was the story? Uh, kidney stones. Oof. So, shouldn't really be here, to be honest, doing this. He said rest and that. Climbing them stairs on the way in. To be quite honest, it doesn't look like you're expending a lot of energy at the moment. It's it's like at Zuki, we're going, oh, that sloth move today. Calm down. Yeah, but I had to get here. It's been raining. Yeah. I had to come up the stairs. I had to carry the computer. Yeah. Well, that's not entirely true because your girlfriend was carrying it. I saw her outside. Yeah, but, but I'm just saying. And, oh. then you, and then you handed it to me and said, Steve, God carry this. Almighty. So. Yeah, I know. That's already a lie. Christ almighty. Whinging. Not whinging. I'm in show business. I know loads of people that wake up every day with a sore knob, feeling like they've had their kidneys probed, and they, they you know, they will say they're unconscious. So they yeah. don't whinge about it, they get straight back onto it. They, you know, <laughs> a lot of them are on TV now. Yeah, straight back to hosting game shows. <laughs> So, you rushed to hospital. So, tell the, take us through the take us through the events because it does sound quite dramatic. You started feeling a bit of pain, did you initially? I felt a bit of pain, and I thought, you know, yeah, maybe I just pulled a muscle or something when I've been wrestling with Ricky and that because mm. you don't know what damage is being done. <laughs> uh, so I just think, oh, it'll go in a minute, and then it didn't. It got a bit badder. It did. It, it got badder, did it? So then got I thought I, I, oh, I, I was I was crippled. I was lying on the floor in agony. Looking on the internet, looking for a sort of Still solutions. looking at monkey news. No, <laughs> I, I was just, I just put in like belly ache and stuff and they were saying me loads of different things. Um, and I, what I used to do when I was a kid, I used to always just get a cold ashtray and put that on my belly. And the coldness used to get rid of the badness. <laughs> Amazing. The cold has got me. Well, what? Like, like a witch doctor. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. This, this, this is like... <laughs> a witch doctor who happens to work in a pub. It's like a, some sort of fifth century remedy <laughs> yeah. written in mud. <laughs> yeah. Coldness doth get away with the badness. <laughs> yeah. uh, why, why specifically an ashtray? Just because they were at this sort of old cold. <laughs> <laughs> They're old I cold? What? I don't know what this is. I, mean, it's, I love this idea that he's... He, uh, He's uh, had the operation and he comes round and they're talking to him and uh, his, his girlfriend gets a phone call and, go, and, and they say, uh, Mr Pilkerton's it's got maybe complications, he's just talking rubbish. <laughs> yeah, she goes, oh good. Yeah, he's back to his old self. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what, 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 is it, why specifically an ashtray? Sorry, because it's old cold, I understand it's old it's, cold. Oh yeah, we understand, we, every, <laughs> everyone who's done a medical degree understands old cold, but, but, uh... <laughs> <laughs> old, yeah. old cold belly badness. <laughs> if you want to buy that book, Old Cold Belly Badness, it's uh, uh, the, yeah. the history of abdominal surgery by Carl Pilkington. No, it just, you know, it, it, so, if but you, you put it in the freezer or something first. You can do if you want, but they're normally cold anyway. <laughs> sort of thick glass, and that holds the cold. But we're not smoking our house, so I had to use a plate. <laughs> That's madness. A plate's not going to work. A pla Famously, a plate oh doesn't God, work. No. Oh God, no! So you put a, a, a uh, you put a plate on your belly, but that didn't yeah, do any. No, you that, don't remember, that yeah. didn't work. So, uh, called Suzanne and said, "Oh, I'm in agony here." She said, "Go to the doctors then." Good advice. So a lot of people have done that straight away, as opposed <laughs> to going through the plate. <laughs> ashtray. ashtray. <laughs> <laughs> so he went to hospital and they went to hospital and he said, Have you got an ashtray? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> they went no, this, is, an ashtray. this is no smoking. <laughs> what is the closest thing sort of living that's nothing? I don't know what you mean. <laughs> what? What's like the closest like do you know at some point something's gone from nothing to something? On it. No, I don't no, I don't understand what you mean. Do you mean what is the, the, the first and lowest and most primitive and most simple form of life? No He's right here in this room, Rick. <laughs> say say like when you look at a, a stick insect, right? You go, right, there's a slight crossover there from a stick to a living thing. No it's not. It didn't used to be a no, stick. No no no, it's not there's no there's no there's no biological relationship between it and a stick. 
but they, there isn't much difference between the two, is what I mean. Of course there is. It's a huge there isn't. Difference. They just they just sit there looking like a stick. That's their skill. Yes, but there's nothing to do with being a stick. It's it's like camouflage. That's like saying when a soldier puts on combat gear, you're, you're saying he's a cross between a human and a shrub. <laughs> what I'm saying is, have you seen them weird things that just look like they they, they sort of look like a leaf? Yeah, there are insects that that, that that have evolved to look like a leaf. At some it. point, something has had it away with a leaf. No! What? At no point has something had it away with a leaf. No, to make it look that much like no. a leaf. <laughs> no! <laughs> At no point did a beetle shag a leaf. It's superficial. It's the way it looks. That's all it... it that's like saying chameleons must have mated with green once. They are green. No, but It what, looks like a leaf. But then how does it meet... How does it have relationships? It will be going around, sort of having it away with a leaf. <laughs> no, it won't, because it doesn't know what it looks like. It doesn't matter. It's not like they, uh, they, they, they you know, um, a stick insect that be talking to a stick for ages and go, oh, I've wasted my time here. This club's dead. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Rude. I was chatting to her. She was foxy, but she was giving me nothing. But, Dave, that's that's not a stick insect. That's a stick. What? What are you talking about? That's a stick. You've been talking to a stick all night. I, thought, oh, I can't believe it. I just thought she had a great, slim figure. No, no, it's actually a real stick. Well, I've been watching birds more than insects recently. Oh, in, okay. In the, last, on from in the last week, just because so, I've sort of looked at the ant and the bee and that. And what I've found with pigeons is they've got wings, yet they walk a lot. <laughs> I'd love that to be a thesis where he got like a, a half a million pounds grant from a university, and I said, well, Pilkins seems to, he's done ants and he's done bees. Um, he's, he's followed ants. <laughs> Apparently they're not doing anything, some of them are lazy. Um, he, we are granting him another uh, half a million pounds. Um, he's been working on it for a year. <laughs> um, please welcome Carl Pilkinson. Carl, what have you found? Well, even though pigeons have wings, they walk a lot. Well, I heard, uh, and you told me this, so I know it's true. What? Do you know when I talked about replacing blood with coconut, uh, coconut, what was it? Well, one, it, it said, uh, um, coconut milk can be used, uh, as, as plasma. But yeah. I've had that verified, because it's off one of those websites where there are spurious facts. Uh, well, what do you think of that, Steve? I mean, I've sort well, of touched on it. But I've just got to echo what Ricky said. I, I can't have an opinion unless it's been verified. But why, why aren't you just being open-minded enough to go, well... Uh, well no, 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 that's not, not being open-minded. Open-minded open isn't uh, believing everything you hear. You don't believe everything you read, do you? Um, a lot of it. A lot of stuff you kind of go, well, that's, that's interesting to... But what, we talked about this, what about Noah's Ark? What about it? Well, you know, you said you believed it because it's in book form. But, uh, according to that, uh, didn't he get two of every species on a big boat? <laughs> But we, but we know that's impossible, don't we? Um, depends where he was. If he was above a zoo, there would have been a lot of different stuff knocking about. That's my only problem. What I'm saying is, where was he floating where he could get an elephant, a giraffe, a cat, a dog, a gerbil? Where were all these things floating about? Well, exactly. Right, that's, these, that's these Old Testament downfall. zoos, they were quite... Yeah, yeah quite but exactly, but, you're, but you're, you're right, you're questioning it. They're, 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 how is it possible? But I've just said, a zoo. There's no zoo that has got 1% of all animal species. Well, I don't know where you got them from then. There's a couple of million species of animal. And how did he round these animals up? Because they were drowning, so they were, they were looking for any boat. <laughs> so they were looking, they were actively seeking out an ark. Well, they, they would have just been looking for anything to get hold of. Yeah, and where did he keep them all? How did he keep them all separate? How did he... At that point... Oh, you... no, the uh, lions at the otter. No, because at that point, it's, it's that thing, in it of how you all pull together in it Don't in a bad situation. talk shit. You all chip in, they're all like, oh, God, you know, let's be nice to our neighbours. Right, so there's spiders talking to flies and... Well, they, they would have just gone elsewhere, wouldn't they? They would have been mean? on another bit of the boat. The spiders don't have to knock about with the lions just because they're all in it together. They get their own little area, don't they? Well, I don't know. How big is this boat? How it's big, big. It's big. It's a big boat. Uh, how long... What was the warning he got from God to make it? I don't know. It's a couple of weeks. Yeah. Two, two of every species, Carl. How big would this boat have to be? Yeah, it's big. 
You can't just keep saying it's big. Because I know in your mind, you're imagining this ark, there's a boat with Noah up the front with his wife, two giraffes behind him, they're next there, two yeah. elephants, and it just, and, and it's just like, it's just like elephant, giraffe, hippo, dog, cat, weasel, couple of frogs, and a spider talking to a fly going, yeah. let's get on. But when we're off here, you're dead. But what would you have done then? Would you, are you saying that you wouldn't get on there because it's too noisy? It's not a question of what it didn't happen. Done. It didn't happen. To be honest, I'm not bothered. And they got through it, didn't they? <laughs> they got through it. They're here now. We're not short of them. If anything, like I said, he didn't do us a favour because he saved too much. You can't move out there for stuff. <laughs> <laughs> That's the jiggle for, uh... Excerpts from Carl's diary. This is all uh, legitimate stuff. Freaking, I've had no input in this. This is the first time we get to read it. Went and did some shopping for stuff as it was my turn. Suzanne moaned a bit because I forgot orange juice and bought some cheap toilet paper. She always buys the expensive toilet paper. I don't know why they make toilet paper with pretty patterns on it. <laughs> that made it into the diary. <laughs> uh, up and out at nine o'clock to go to the Cotswolds. Now, I think this was a gift for your girlfriend, wasn't it? For her yeah, birthday, it was you went to the cotswolds. Yeah, that, so I just went for one night. It got the car and headed off. We found the B&B, but they wouldn't let us in the room because we were early. We went for a walk. <laughs> there was not much around the B&B, so we had a quick walk around the car park. <laughs> and went back in. Happy birthday. <laughs> the room was now ready. It's an alright room. Free biscuits, so I ate them straight away. <laughs> like a child. <laughs> like a dog. <laughs> <laughs> he runs in, jumps on the bed. <laughs> no, 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 get off the bed, it's all the furniture. <laughs> the room overlooked the car park that we'd already been ranked. <laughs> <laughs> You're staring at that window, remember when we went there? <laughs> We'd always have the car park. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. The room had posh coat hangers in the wardrobe with sponge on them. <laughs> so I ate the sponge. <laughs> Don't think they are needed. Um, we went and booked a table for Sunday dinner. I had beef. It was nice enough, but there was a family of 13 behind us. I don't see the point in going out in large numbers. They annoyed me. One of the family asked for sorbet before his next course. He was only about 11. He thought he was it. <laughs> well, I said to Suzanne, I've had enough and needed a kip. Watch Planet Earth on BBC One. They filmed a panda for four weeks and all it did was sit in its cave. It did nout. If I was Fiat, I wouldn't name one of my cars after them as it suggests it won't work or go very far. It'd be like bringing out a Ford Sloth. No one would buy it. New Vauxhall Slug. <laughs> <laughs> we had a look around the local village. There wasn't much to it. We did the usual thing and had a look around the church graveyard to see how old the dead people are. <laughs> so, Su Suzanne, the head of the time so far, she's gone to the Cotswolds, the room wasn't ready, she's seen the car park, and they'll just go and play how old the dead people are. Well, I like the fact that you mentioned we did the usual thing of having a look around the church graveyard. Do you make her do that's that every time you, you do, go away? It, I like the fact, I want to know what she did for two hours when you slept. She just looked out at the car park, just like, memories. <laughs> but well, that's, that's what you do, though, isn't it, when you go to these places. There's nothing else, unless you want fudge. <laughs> or, uh, <laughs> you know, you, you walk around the church graveyard and, <laughs> and have a look. Like it's nothing. Fudge. We went home. It took three hours to drive back. People say they go to the country to see the wildlife. I saw rabbits, pheasants and a fox on the way home. They were all dead in the road. 